Peace, peace, go hard family. This is your brother, Mass Quasi. Is this, if this is your first time to my channel, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm getting new to all of this stuff. You know, today I have a, a beautiful guest with us, African superstar. How are you doing today, sister? Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing fine. I'm okay. doing good. I'm honored to uh, be asked to come on your show. So thank you so much for having me today. You know what? I, I'm and I never. Uh, I, I probably interview one or two people because I wasn't really doing YouTube like that. You know, I'm doing a business developer. That's a whole different story. But today it's about you, 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 and you're in Ghana. Yes, yes, I'm in Ghana. I live in Ghana. Uh huh. <laughs> Mifiri Ghana, for all my Ghana folk. Big shout outs to any of our Ghanaian viewers or, uh, you know, family out there. Okay, cool, cool. So, you know, we, we're going to uh, try to stay within a particular time frame, but I did meet you. Uh, uh, I, recently, we connected on mm -hmm. Facebook, and then I was in Atlanta, so you had this over Bomani house. Bomani's a great, great brother. If you're ever in Atlanta, yeah. Atlanta, go see that brother. I actually stayed with him for a couple of days so we can create some content. We had a really great time. Went to the Malcolm X yeah, Festival. I've run into him on several occasions, he, you know, different events and things like that here in Ghana. And um, we, he actually did a recording for one of my, um, I do motivational speaking, so I was asked on a panel, and he, he actually did the recording for that event. So you know I, I'm what? And he, he's he's been getting it in for 15 years, and he, about yes. eight years before, before I even went to Africa, I saw Bom Bomani, and I looked at his website, and uh, the first thing that I noticed that he was very meticulous. Mm. Okay, he got all the information he's you need. There. He got a track record that can back up um, his interest here on the continent. And Yo, he, he, the Har he, the, he the Harry Tugman of the movement. You know what I mean? Mm. Because he's been bringing people over, even Why though he forth? haven't made it, bringing them back and forth. And that is tremendous pioneering work. We always got to give our people props. There's been a lot of attack on uh, uh, the real movement. You know, there's a lot of distorted views of the movement. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and YouTube, you know, it's a, a place where it could be very impactful. But 80% of it is, uh, is not... Uh, geared yeah, towards I mean, real. people are jumping on the trends. Um, unfortunately, that's definitely something that's happening here in Ghana since the year of return. You just have like an influx of people coming for a variety of reasons. And I mean, you you have the ability to travel for whatever uh, you want to, but unfortunately, that is having an impact on the media it coming is. out of here. You know, it, it is. We we want to talk about why we should get out of there. We understand we have problems in, 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 in the States. You know, I'd rather us sort our problems out over here where where the propensity for uh, death is uh, less likely. And uh, you, you spoke about New York. You spoke about the 10 year, 10 year old girl in your last live who uh, took someone's life. Could you tell us about that? Yeah. So actually, um, I get made aware several of my viewers <laughs> are always keeping me updated on what's happening in the West. Um, and I think, you know, for me, one of the primary reasons I moved out of the U.S., I left the U.S. in 2017. I went to the U.K. for a period before moving here to Ghana in 2020. But the violence was definitely a, one of my top five, you know, concerns living in the West. And I think many people have cognitive dissonance in the West where they see all these things happening around them but they are very disconnected. So what Quasi was referring to is, um, for those of you that may not know, obviously people that live in New York are definitely aware, subway violence is up 65% in New York. There have been cases of people being randomly pushed on the tracks. Um, there's been violence on the platforms. And uh, I believe about a month or so ago, there was a random shooting in a subway car when it was in motion. These are the kind of things that can impact you, the individual, just because you're in that environment, not necessarily because you have anything to do with the circumstances. Obviously, we know in New York as well, there was a racially motivated mass shooting in Buffalo. Um, we already know the racial climate. Texas, when, you know, when, when you look at when, when you look at all of the, the shooting, I mean, there's no question. I'm sitting here. I've been shot before. You know, I did a video. Yeah. My, my brother's been killed. My cousin over here, he just, you know, that I'm here with, he just came home after 25 years. I have another cousin came home after 30. Our inner wow. cities, man, it, it's, it's no question that we live in a war zone. But what they do is they uh, they package it up in, in, in a designer brand. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's okay for us to live these tragic 
uh, uh, lives while the rest of the world, they have, you know, the freedom to enjoy their brothers, the freedom to enjoy their family while we got 10 year old kids. And, and that, that's just a little girl. But, you know, in Chicago, I mean, those kids killing at 10, 11, 12 years old. I knew this kid and at nine years not, old. You know, it's, it's not normal. And obviously you go um, between Atlanta and, and, and the Gambia and you can see the difference in the children. You know, the children yeah. are innocent. They're, they're, they're children. They're very... Like, these uh, real little children. Yeah. They don't have to deal with additional things. I mean, I saw some of the clips from the recent uh, school shooting in Texas. Some of the children saying that now they're apprehensive of going into school. They're worried about another school shooting, you know? Yeah, listen, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a whole other thing as well. What is yeah, society trying to do? Are they trying to push us... You know, they talk about martial law. And I tell everybody, I, I've been uh, doing taxes for 20 years with the Internal Revenue Service. I'm an ERO. I'm a, uh, a, a licensed practitioner. H however, that that industry has been changing. It's been getting worse and worse. So you see people that, you know, uh, uh, it's harder and harder for people. Therefore, you have more crime. You, you understand what I'm saying? And then, you know, um, then, they're, then they're forcing us like... This this is what they do, like you know, martial law, and all of this stuff. They like they said they were going to take the earned income credit away from people here, and that's the you know credit that people were getting, getting them two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars. But they didn't take it the way away the way that we thought they were going to take it away. But what they did is they started getting rid of all the gray area. Now you can't uh, 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 use these dependents. You can't use your cousin, friend, auntie, uncle dependent. And then they said, OK, now uh, all the, the high earners that we used to write off income for. Now they say, OK, now we're going to review all of those. All right. Then the people who were self-employed, you know, they started saying, you know, because you can file on a cash basis. You don't have to have a bank account or a business card. The, the, the code allows someone on a cash basis to file. Then they started saying, okay, we need records for that. So it, it ultimately removed that earned income credit and people got less money. So now, you know, this whole idea of martial law through the whole COVID, we've seen a whole period where people were locked in their houses, locked in their houses. And better believe it's not what they tell you. OK, something else is going on. Everybody's locked in the house. Uh, you go into the pieces shop. It's like you in a uh, a prison cafeteria. You have the walls up. You, you got to stand six inches apart. And uh, are we expect we should we expect to slide more into that? And we got to be prepared. And that's what brought you to Ghana. So uh, and, and how long you been over in Ghana? <laughs> uh, I've, I've now been in Ghana going on. It'll be two years in September. So I came actually after lockdown, as soon as the borders open. I, I came to Ghana and, mm -hmm. you know, it's funny you mentioned uh, that because that was one of the driving factors. I was in the UK at the time mm -hmm. and um, I've never spent extensive time in the UK. I'm a frequent traveler. I would travel every few months and things like that. So that was kind of the first time I was really stationary in the UK. Yes. And I thought to myself, they have a lot of surveillance in the UK. They have a lot of, um, we call them CCTV. They have cameras everywhere. They're yes. able to lock down the trains. I mean, and they have a tight, you know, grip. And I thought to myself, mm, if they're going to be doing these kind of lockdowns, I'd rather be on the continent. So I need to gear up to just go because at that point I wanted to do more of a, you know, six months in the UK, six months in Ghana kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I said, you know what, let me just roll the dice and just pack my things and try to see what I can do on the continent. So I came and, um, you know, we, we, we had some ups and downs, but overall, yeah. it's yeah. it's been wonderful. I love Ghana. I, I yeah. love the decision to come to the continent. You know, I think it's um, it's important that uh, when we come, we have it, it's a it's apparent that, you know, anyone that's in America or, or, or the UK or anywhere that's there, that's fine because you're going to have people on both sides of this. But we yeah. have to realize we are at a point in time in history where we're seeing a large number of black people getting the hell up out of the West because of the, 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 the threat. If you don't control the, the politics, if you don't control the politics in your community, when they bring that and you don't, you know, uh, and your households are broken, you don't have men in the household, right? When they bring the heroin in, what community you think that's going to go in? When they bring the alcohol in, what community you think that's going to go in? When they bring all the bad food and everything that's the, the worst of the society, who you think they're going to have that and promote that? Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, and then, you know, moving out, coming to Africa, we definitely need to work together and um, 
in an organized fashion. It's not going to happen for most of us. Like you said, four nationals come in and they create districts. Could you tell us more about that? You spoke about it on your live. Yeah, you know, um, it's 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 what they do. It's what they do globally. You know, they will come and begin to occupy and then they will gather and then they will also support other people that are coming in and train them up and, and, and whatnot. I mean, the Chinese are notorious for that. They have Chinatowns all over America. They have their own communities in the UK. Um, even down in South Africa, I talked about there's, you know, Cape Town is primarily where the white people live in South Africa. Then you have Durban. That's where the Indian community work, you know, lives and everything. So, I mean, I think uh, we need to occupy the continent, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. to preserve it for ourselves because we see the other foreigners are coming. And, you know, not just perhaps the... Uh, Western diaspora, but also the African diaspora. You know, mm -hmm. you have access to the West. You see these people are coming to your homelands. You should have an interest in preserving a piece of that pie for your family mm -hmm. and future generations, you know, because here in Ghana, um, they are gentrifying Accra. You know, mm -hmm. they are building these luxury homes and all this stuff that the local people cannot afford. Right. And what's going to happen basically I would say if like the foreign Ghanaians are not occupying that stuff or diasporians are not occupying that stuff in 20 years, you know, you're going to have uh, something similar to South Africa here in Accra, you know, and you, and talked, about, you, talk, you talked about South Africa. You talked about there being racism in South Africa. You know, uh, I don't know if uh, you knew, but in, a, in the Gambia, a British man actually assaulted me, you know, a couple years ago. I will let you know that I did a go white? to Yes, a white British man assaulted what? me. Oh, yes, and I did go to jail. So better believe that, you know. Oh and, my God. Uh, I, and but however, you know, they're not. They don't. How Gambia justice system is a uh, 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 compen. Wow. Uh, you gotta compensate. Wow. wow. You know, it that doesn't surprise me um, because obviously there is a favoritism. There is a favoritism here because of the colonialism. You know, a lot of people do. Um, you know, give preferential treatment to whites and Europeans and Americans well, and well, stuff well, like well, that. Well, we saw we saw that, but you know, I mean, the the, 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 the judicial system was uh, uh, more than fair. It was uh, just a, 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 a you know a couple week process. You know what I mean? And you know, uh, like I said, you know, I didn't go out with the intentions on doing anything. The the, the white man he actually uh, snuck me and punched me. While I was looking at a bumper because someone I was with backed into his car, I just hopped out just to see if the car was all right. Wow, and while I was looking wow, down, wow, I heard wow. him coming and I heard him, you know, talking crap. You know what I mean? They're out of control. So you know, I, I, and, I, I, and, and I was like, I'm trying to try state north east north. It's not even my brain to even thinking that, of, you know, from where I'm from, that would never even happen. You know what right. I mean? But over there, you know, but I, I think after he hit me, he quickly realized because he he tried to run off. You understand what I'm saying? But uh, uh, in any case, you know, we have and, 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 that, and that's not common. That That's not common. You, you So, the, so, the so did they, did they rule in your favor? Huh? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, yeah cool. I took care of it. You know, trust me. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, you know, uh, those are the things that and it was the same day that I purchased my land. You know what I mean? That was so crazy because, you know, we everything is energy. Everything is energy. And, you know, us coming over into the continent, you know, um, we already have challenges that we're going to have to face. Just like right. in the society, we have challenges just to survive. We do not need to complicate these challenges with our own personal agendas. And that's what we've seen. And we've seen in the Gambia, you know, like, you know, uh, like I said, I just had a daughter a few days ago. I have four children in the Gambia, two sons and wow. two daughters. So, you know, I have blood. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, man, you been busy, man. You know what you I'm saying? Busy. Because, you know, I went over. I went, I went over with the intention to integrate. And then, you know, I didn't come with all my baggage. I came by myself. You understand? Because we know a lot of times, you know, the ones that's closer to us, you know, they're the ones that's holding us back and we got to move out on our own. And it's OK. So I made that decision to go to Africa and establish myself there. And um, uh, uh, as I said, as more people came in, I'm trying to find something for you. I'm going to throw it over to you. As more people came in, you've seen them, you know, uh, you know, you know, trying to uh, dominate the market. You see them, mm. try, uh, uh, you know, doing scams, doing land scams, you know, uh, you know, just just uh, not doing business properly. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Yeah, I 
and that that's definitely something that is a part of this transition. You you have the people that have genuine intentions for the continent and have probably been interested in the continent maybe prior to the, this like recent popularity. And then you have the opportunists that are like, okay, you know, I can get in here and you know capitalize off the situation. So um, I always advise my viewers. Um, and you guys are welcome to come over to my channel. It's The African Superstar Black here on YouTube. But I always advise yeah. my viewers to check whomever you're dealing with their track record. You know, their track record is a really good indication of what they are about. And if they have yeah. no track record, it's okay to suspend judgment and say, you know what? I'd rather kind of give this person some, some time to um, see how they operate because, unfortunately, our people are getting put in the cart ahead of the horse. And they're excited about Africa. They're excited about this movement. They've been watching social media. And then they're just doing things that are completely illogical, things they wouldn't even do in the West, you know, buying right. land online in countries you've never traveled to. It's not really wise. <laughs> you know what? You know, I, I, see you, I see you over some pictures because, uh, you know, I think, uh, like you said, you, you always have to look at a person's track record. And if a person don't have a track record of uh, any accomplishments, then, you know, uh, you know, like, like I said, you know, I, I don't even really speak to people like that. You understand what I'm saying? If you can't see the obvious, then I'm not sitting there trying to explain it to you. You know, I'm so busy. I don't have time. I left the conversation a long time ago. If you don't get it, you just don't get it. I'm speaking with the people that do. I remember when I, um, First, oh, is this is this is this is this lady with the long braids? Is that your wife? Those those are my wives there. Wives? How many do you have? I had I had several, but you know that's not important. I just wanted to show you that you know <laughs> <laughs> that's not important. You know, uh, but I just wanted to show you, uh, and, and uh, you know, like I said, it's a part of the culture, and that's one of the things that I you know I chose Ooh, to do with myself that I came under uh, uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, a jealousy and hate because of but what they won't show you is this what i'm about to show you now right let me show you right now okay bang just so people can can know and i send you all of that those people over there are people that you know were a part are are in or were a part of the organization at uh some point at a time or another and um like i said when i went over there you know i already came from a situation did you see my screen yeah i can see it i can see it this is our clothing line, street alumni. This is my cousin here. This is okay. me right here about 25 years ago. We had a clothing line called street alumni. We got into a multi-million dollar deal, okay? This is me right here. This is Juliet from Blacksit. This is my boy, G. This is uh, uh, Miss Beverly. She stayed with me and lived with me. She was one of the first investors. This is, um, I forget, uh, Sandra. She's from the UK. Beverly's from the US. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to go into who the people are. This lady, this is about two years ago in Gambia when we first started selling land. Okay. This me, Julia, and uh, uh, G. Yeah. This is us back then. This is us when we first started land getting money in a Gambia. This was two years ago. This was a more softer, gentler Juliet. Uh, and this is this is one of the properties we have. We have multiple vacation properties. To date, we have about five of them. You know, uh, this is me uh, and my team right here. OK, this is Elvin. This is my wife, Yasin. This is one of my wife. And this is Elvin. He's a brother that came in. You know, this is my compound uh, there in the Gambia. I've been teaching in this area for years. This wow. is a, a couple years uh, teaching, doing a, a class at the uh IT Center on, on Caribou Avenue, the uh, Indian Institute of Tech Technology. You know what I mean? So, you know, here, here, me, here, here, Umi, Umi been down with three years. She's worked personally with Art Kathy. She's worked personally with uh, Ju uh, uh, Juliet, you know, uh, you know, so like I said, I've been doing more just to, this is when I first went over there about four years ago to Gambia. That's the same living room you see those people in. And then, like I said, track record, you know, this is my, the team last year. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, this is actually my first wife, her brother here, my boy G, you know, Ida been down. So, you know, <laughs> just a little bit, you know, I just wanted to just show people that's my daughter. 
this is one property let me this is my this is my oldest daughter malaysia right here she, she's in connecticut but this is uh the property we had this is a sister you know that uh, that was working with me very close to me you know uh yeah so i just wanted to just just bang, bang the uh, audience in the head with that right quick because a lot of times you know people will overlook you know uh you know what the real work that's getting done right yeah yeah the i mean it's, it's i mean it's something that i've encountered too because it's like you know i had um i first came to ghana in 2016 i've been traveling here ever since then um i had a larger platform that was shut down on youtube last year i had gotten over to 11,000 subscribers so now it's kind of like i'm starting from scratch and people think oh you know you're you're from the year of return people or you're new to ghana this whole thing and it's like no you know i was I, i've been into the continent um for a long period of time because i saw because i saw the direction of what was going on in the west and right, I realized exactly. that the likelihood of those things changing is very slim. So I need to be in a place where, although we have our problems here, there's still a lot of room for growth and there's still uh -huh. a lot of opportunity. Uh -huh. You know, we're limited in the West, if we want to be honest, to impact the things that are encroaching on us the most. And you talked about, you know, the difference of the, the, the children, the caliber. We're dealing with psychological effects in the West because we are helpless to many things that are impacting our people. Check the this out. Check this out. Sister. Violence is not normal. You know, it, it's it, not it, a normal it, thing. My, like my when my students come in, I tell them, I ask them, have you guys ever been in a war before? And of course, they'll say no, because most people uh, right. define <laughs> war as a physical conflict, conflict. But you have spiritual warfare and I talk about financial warfare. You have spiritual, mm, chemical, biological, you know. I had several people that I know close die uh, within months. A, a, a girl, she's like our, my little niece, right? She's like my little niece. She died from fentanyl, right? Last year when I came, she died, you know, uh, and then... A guy came to see me. He was like, Quasi, I heard you was in town. I was like, let me go see, you know, quick before he leave out of town. So we sat there for like an hour and a half cracking up. A month later, he dead from fentanyl. You know, so it's like, you know, they like they 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 they're annihilating us and they eliminating us. Like you were saying, they already did it. It's already done. It ain't about, you know, if you don't see it today in this time, I, you know, I tell people over uh, 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 30 years ago, this Black Panther brother, uh, he came up to us and said, hey, yeah, you guys got to look up Trilateral Commission on Foreign Relations, the New World Order, Illuminati, one world, totalitarian world government. He was like, hey, he was like, it's going to be cameras everywhere. This was 30 years ago. It wasn't no damn cameras everywhere. We didn't even have cell phones. We have phone booths. 30 years later, there's cameras everywhere. And know what else he told me? He said, he was like, he was like, people are gonna have debits and credit cards. At that time, it was straight up fiat. If anybody had a credit card, I think my uncle, he had good credit back. <laughs> One of my uncles. But everybody have a, a, a debit card. So the money was taken out of society. The all I see and I, the all I see and is cameras everywhere. They yep. can take the camera. I don't know if you see some of these movies, but they can they can see through other people's cameras. If they're looking yeah. for, for some face recognition, they, they put their face in there. Huh? They're utilizing. Um, and that's something that you know people don't also realize is like they think about perhaps coming to the continent and oh, I'm I'm gonna have a lack of certain conveniences. In many ways, that is freedom because the lack of infrastructure in some places is the lack of surveillance and the ability for you to live freely. You know what I mean? Because in the West, like you said, they're monitoring everything. In the UK, it got to a point during COVID, they wouldn't even accept cash, which meant every single transaction you were doing, you had to have a card. They were tracking where you went, what time, what you bought. You understand? And they're using right. all this. What do they want this data for? You know? Right. Um, so it's... it's, it's I mean, the writing is, it's, it's on the wall. I think what it is, is that people don't want to, like I mentioned on a previous live stream, they don't want to take responsibility for the, 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 the forward direction of their life because right. coming to the realization that these things are confronting us is then a call to action. You see? So okay. if you just deny, if you just say, Oh, you know, Quasi, you're crazy or African superstar, you're just, you know, you're so dramatic, you know, you're, you know, 
then you just absolve yourself of having to take action and having to actually plan your future, you know? And yep. it's unfortunate because those people, it's kind of like every time they have a hurricane, okay? It's, mm -hmm. it's every single time. They tell the people, hey, there's a big storm coming. You guys need to evacuate. And the people say, no, nah, I'm not leaving my property, you know, them hillbillies. They were like, no, nah, I'm staying here. I'm going to ride out the storm. And then we see them on top of their house looking for someone to come and rescue them, looking for a helicopter, looking for a life raft, you know. And it's like, don't be like that, you know. It's better to be prepared than to be unprepared. It's better for you to begin the process of looking at alternative options just for, just for safety and survival, okay. If we're wrong, then you will have just had an advantage and a leg up, okay? Right, but if right. we're right, you know, uh, which, I mean, I can't speak about Quasi. I don't know him. I haven't known him for a long time. We've just been in communication recently. Right. But um, we, you know, I've personally been talking about this for a good 10 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm so happy that I began the decision to get out of that environment a long time ago. So now when I'm sitting, when I'm looking back at what's going on in the U.S., I'm like, man, I'm so happy that I've already kind of positioned myself here to have the options not to be in the West full time. You know, you know, you know what? And, and uh, my journey began in 07 when I when I really when I was going to come over uh, and, you know, it took a, a minute before I got here. Uh, however, once I got to the continent, I remember always complaining and talking about you know what took pl place uh what, what's taking place in the states and what i realized is that they that's not the reality there for them and and i what i realized is that no longer was that my reality not exactly and, you know exactly. when i went when i first went over i really you know i wasn't trying to bring people over i wasn't trying to build a business around you just went over for right i was just trying to get the hell away and then uh, and in doing that, you know, um, I figure, you know, wherever I go, I'm a build. You know what I mean? I'm a builder. And uh, in doing that, you know, and then building and then I stayed in, in the compound where you see everybody on the balcony. I, st I stayed in that compound two and a half years before I came out into the public. You know, at the time, you know, nobody was there. And uh, and that was after coming over several years before that. But I stayed in there two and a half years. And I had my first two children there for my first wife. And um, once I came out, you know, immediately, uh, of course, I ran into Juliet Ryan. You understand? I didn't go down the street and open a little shop selling eggs and bags of sugar. You know, I was like, let me go and see how I can make an impact. And I became the business developer for her. And uh, over nine months, we were pretty much together every day while she built that house out there. And um, I ended up leaving from her. And, uh, you know, uh, because, you know, as a movement, it, movement is not a part of personal brand. So we can't we can't get it twisted because it's about a collaborative. You know, it's about a bunch of people, a lot of very talented people in the movement that's coming. And uh, we, we want to be able to uh, have a place where we all can uh, participate. But if you have your own brand, then, you know, it, it's really no room for anybody else. And uh, however, then my second business partner, you know, there was problems there as well in terms of, uh, you know, rhetoric and things like that. <clears throat> but uh, and, uh, but we were able to create the largest uh, economic community there on paper. All right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, we had multi million dollar land deal that we were in the process of doing and hundreds and hundreds of investors and things like that. But it all came uh, uh, apart when you had two people that came in you know, less than a week or two came into the country and um, they were embraced by other individuals there who who uh, who knew me, first of all, who knew me very well and lacked the integrity to say, hey, listen, let's uh, let's handle this a different way, because, you know, there's a lot of people looking on, you know, uh, we we don't want to make a mistake. What if we make a mistake and we say something that's not true? You know, so integrity and, and that's exactly what happened. But it, it came at the uh, the consequence and loss of a lot of people. But I always say at the same time, we need it. We need a hold up. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody don't need to come over here. Only the builders need to come. Everybody that's coming over for a, uh, a safari, you know, that's fine. They can come and go, but they cannot be given the mic. And well, they, they won't. They won't actually. I mean, unfortunately, because of social media, <laughs> a lot of people have 
um, an audience, you know. Um, but the thing is, yeah. and and the thing that I've always said, and the thing that's remained true is, is people that don't have the um, true intentions, they don't, they won't have longevity, you know. They won't, definitely, because yeah, definitely. You to, to have a relationship and a journey on the continent, and I think that's what people need to understand. It's a journey. You're going. Journey. You, if you're moving here, you're growing here. You're you're developing relationships here. You're establishing businesses. It's a it's a marathon. It's not kind of like a a goal. Like, oh, I've climbed to the top of the mountain. I'm in Ghana. I'm in Gambia. I'm in Senegal. No, it's yeah. ongoing. Yeah. Right. The thing is, right. the people without the proper intentions, they won't have the longevity because. When those challenges start to confront them, they'll, they'll start saying, you know what? This isn't worth it. Yeah. I can do this. I can do that. And, and and then they will ultimately return back because water seeks its own level. You know, we, and I do agree with you. This this journey is for leaders. This journey yeah. is for visionaries. This is for people that can govern their own affairs. You mm -hmm. know, if you're someone who needs to be told what to do and you need the infrastructure, then it, it's probably not ideal for you now because you have to innovate your path forward. When you are coming to the continent as it stands now, five, 10 years down the line, you know, hopefully we have, we'll have put some things in place um, that will help people segue in and whatnot. But for right, now, right. You, you, you know, know what? you know, if I, you know, I had a, I had a lot of people come do uh, 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 my compound there. You understand what I'm saying? Like I said, I started earlier. I was the one that talked to everybody. You understand what I'm saying? If you filled out a form well, with, with Black Sid in the early years or the, with uh, my other business partner, Art Kathy, you know, I was the one that was the, the business developer. OK. And uh, that was done absolutely flawlessly and successfully at a high level. When the whole economy was down, we were able to get and create a lot of uh, uh, economic uh, group activity, you know. Uh, but uh, however, in any case, you know, uh, we learn, like I said, it had to be held up and, and that had to take place. But we do need accountability. And uh, that's something that we're pushing for. We're pushing for people to get involved and we need a, a legal accountability uh, team, you know, to. And, and that's in place. We have uh, we have one lawyer right now that's committed. We have uh, uh, several other people that's been behind the scenes. We have organizations that's coming in now to hold people accountable. That means if you're going on YouTube and using your platform to uh, defame and attack individuals, you know, we are going to use every uh, instrument of the law to come after you because this movement and everybody should be in harmony with this, everybody, because if we are not taking care of all of these little fires, it's going to be uh, an inferno. All right. We already seen it, you know, and that's because what's happening is you having uh, people who should be probably uh, expelled from these countries who ha are on these platforms and they're encouraging division. You know, if yeah. you're on a platform, you have a platform, you shouldn't be saying, you know, don't, you know, uh, create in division with other people that are powerful. You understand what I'm saying? You know, not and I mean, you can't you can't. You know, the mentality, and I mean, I think, unfortunately, it's it's a Western thing mm -hmm. where it's like, we're going to come in and, and this place needs to be, um, it needs to be fixed, it needs to be changed, it needs to be modernized. But, you know, the irony is when Americans, for instance, go to the rest of the world, you know, they do as Romans do. You know, you can't come to the continent with the mentality that, <laughs> you know, you're just going to, like, dominate. That's going to, that's going to fail and it yeah. has failed as we look at, you know, the example of Liberia, you look at people that the American Liberians coming over with this very same mentality of, oh, you know, we're going to we're going to do this. We're going to do that. It's wrong. The way forward yeah. is to, you know, create a bridge. And obviously we have cultural differences, but I encourage, uh, you know, I have a mission statement on my platform. It is SMP stands for strategy, maturity and patience. So mm -hmm. understanding exactly how historic what we are doing is. And then having the maturity to navigate the various challenges that will come with that. There will be cultural differences. There will be disagreements. There will be differences of mind and, you know, language barriers. All this stuff should be anticipated because we are culturally different, although we share, you know, origins. Um, right, right, right. And, and, you know, that's what's been my success. People, yeah. 
look at me and they're like, wow, you know, you, I have built a relationship with the Ghanaian community spanning all the way back to Ohio. You know, mm -hmm. I began uh, really associating with the Ghanaian community when I was in college. And, um, you know, it's been a tremendous resource. And the Ghanaians are so fond of me and they have been a huge reason why I've been successful here on the continent. I don't take the attitude that I'm coming as a Westerner and I have right. this infinite right. knowledge. And that's right. another thing because right. people come from the West and they then become a guru on, in Africa. Okay. They don't have any yeah. background. There's a, a lot of straight up bullshitters. Yeah. There's, the I mean, people, and it's like, bullshit. okay, now and I'm they, here. acting like they're from the U.S. and they're not integrating into the society and they're looking down on the people. Right. We looking down the on the local people. Out. We're going to push wrong. for those and people to be out. And it's not all of us. We can't let a few people make us, you know, uh, embarrass us. Right. We, we need to, I like I said, we have to be on it. It'll affect us overall. But I think, uh, you know, my success, as you have seen, is, you know, uh, integrating. And, uh, you know, uh, a brother, he uh, he told me we were doing a video when I was with Blacks in the earlier days when we were doing a citizenship. And he was like, you know, the real repats are the children that will be born. Those are the real ones, not all the ones that got all the 80 percent of the ones that's coming have huge baggage. We're dealing with a situation uh, uh, in the yeah. game here right now. I'm not even going to spoil this live with it. But uh, uh, the, the brother Elvin that I showed you, man, a lady came and had a fatal attraction for this man. And then, you know, try to ruin his business only oh, to, no. be, and, and to, to be supported by people on the ground. That's, you know, that don't understand business and don't have any you know, uh, business sense. And, 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 you know, like I said, uh, you know, we're seeing that, but like I said, those who are in the diaspora who are from Africa and those who are, are, are from, you know, African Americans, brothers and sisters from the UK. I was just looking at my YouTube thing. I mean, we got people all over the world. I don't know how many countries I just looked through and I first time me, me seeing it. I'm like, Oh shoot, Indonesia, Malaysia, and China, you know, people are watching all of this high profile people. And we have to be careful to, you know, like, like I said, it, 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 we have to have some type of uh, association. You know, it's, it's really the, 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 the whole movement as a whole. That's going to be a mess. It, you know, it's a few people will come together and create districts, create sustainability, create com companies, you know, create developments like a uh, uh, brother uh, uh bomani and i know it's a few brothers out there that are creating communities environments where we can live and thrive and work together and that's in yeah. one yeah. you know a uh, harmonious uh display I mean, of, it's, uh, it's gonna you know, be... uh, a celebration for the time <laughs> it's gonna be a process you know i i'm <laughs> i never actually thought i would see this happen because mm -hmm. i didn't think that you know when i first started coming to africa the consensus was like I was crazy, and 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 the majority of people that I spoke to were just not interested. So I never really thought I would see this period where uh, there was a large amount of people interested. But I, obviously, this is to be anticipated. All the collective differences and stuff like that, and and you know it, the Western way that we do things, we're not really communal. So yeah. when exactly. we come here, it's like I want to do my own thing. They want to yeah. do their own yeah. thing. They want to be their own boss. They don't want to come together and kind of say, okay, this is our association. This is what we're going to do. So it, it is a bit complex, but I do want to encourage our viewer, you know, if this is something that you're very interested in, I, I, I encourage you, I implore you to pursue the continent and go forward with the journey. Um, mm -hmm. Later on, we'll be able to see the fruit of, of what we've laid down, especially if you're genuine and you're doing the right things, you know, people right. can stand right. upon uh, your example. So that's right. that's what I have to say. I do you have know, to. I think we went past our thirty minutes, and I think we're. That's gonna... <laughs> but yeah. I got a whole bunch of. It, we listen. We're gonna chop it up and talk again. It's been beautiful. You know what I mean. I'll, I'll link up with you, sister, and I'll be through Ghana soon, man. We're gonna work and do some things together. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care, and and right. uh, big shout out to all, all right. your viewers. All right. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> mm -hmm.